like to share to you about Houston Maritime Attorneys. Just like any other industry, women are at risk for suffering work-related injuries anytime they are on the clock. The courts recognize this and are continually working to protect injured seamen through general maritime law. Maritime law gives workers who have been injured offshore or in the maritime industry the chance to claim necessary compensation for any suffering of medical complications. The following acts are conditional to maritime law, such as Jones Act, Death on the High Seas Act, Limitation of Liability Act, and the last one is Longshoremen and Harbor Workers Compensation Act. General maritime law is the basis for all injuries sustained by seamen. It is important to have a comprehensive understanding of the general law before delving into the subsequent act. History of Admiralty and Maritime Law Maritime law, also referred to as Admiralty law, is nearly as old as the shipping industry itself and governs most accidents that occur on navigable waters. The law's roots can be traced back to the unwritten customs of nautical behavior of the Egyptians and Greeks. However, the earliest formal codes were established around 900 BC on the Greek island of Rhodes. The original maritime laws and codes stemmed from the ancient customs and rules of shipping. For example, the doctrine of general average, the concept that all sea cargo stakeholders, owners, shippers, etc., evenly share any damage or losses that may occur as a result of a voluntary sacrifice of part of the vessel or cargo to save the whole can be traced back to the early shipping customs of the Rodians. The concept of a separate legal authority regulating maritime issues was brought to the West by Eleanor of Aquitaine, who learned of the concept when she accompanied her husband King Louis VII of France to the Mediterranean on the Second Crusade. The term Admiralty Law came from the, Brit the British Admiralty Courts, who presided over maritime matters apparently from England's common law courts. As the U.S., the judicial system is based on the British system. Amended Admiralty Laws were gradually incorporated into our legal system soon after the Constitution was ratified. Though still based on industry standards and customs, maritime law is largely found in the U.S. Constitution, treaties, and international conventions, federal status, the general maritime law, and other judicial decisions, administrative regulations, and customs. When does maritime law apply? Perhaps most obviously, maritime law applies to events that occur on high seas. In other words, accidents that happen beyond the territorial waters of any country. Furthermore, maritime law applies to the territorial sea, which are waters within 12 miles of the shore. However, the laws of liability becomes less clear further inland. Early in the United States history, maritime law did not apply to incidents that occurred within the body of the country and therefore excluded incidents involving the Great Lakes and non-tidal inland waterways. However, throughout the 19th century, this exclusion eroded away. Maritime law is now applied to navigable waters. A waterway is deemed navigable if by itself or by uniting with other waters. It can serve as a continued highway over which commerce is or may be carried on with other states or foreign countries. Consequently, if a body of water is completely landlocked within a single state, then it is not navigable for purposes of admiralty jurisdiction. 
However, a body of water that needs to flow between states to be deemed navigable. A body of water may be deemed navigable if it is a link in a chain of bodies of water that can be used to service interstate commerce. Ultimately, the task is that the commerce of one state must be capable of being carried into another state or foreign country. Once this task has been passed, it is likely that maritime law will be applicable even if it is a recreational vessel. Incident that requires Texas Maritime Accident Attorneys. Also, maritime injury attorneys exist to help injured seamen or dock workers get the compensation they need to recover from serious injuries and afford the long term medical costs that occurred offshore. That includes any accidents that occur on navigable waters, rivers, and ocean, and in harbors or docks. Our maritime lawyers have represented clients who were injured in Jacob Brick accidents, stockboard and board accidents, deck accidents, commercial shipping accidents, falls overboard, cargo ship accidents, dredge accidents, all part from accidents, shipyard accidents, and the last one is cruise ship accident. One notable aspect of maritime accidents is that they are often the first bedding. Offshore oil rig explosion cause significant damages. Vessel collisions are frequently catastrophic. An oil problem can unfairly change the lives of workers. Maritime lawyers fight to help workers recover the compensation they deserve. Whether they are suffering after a major explosion or have injuries caused by unsafe working conditions, our maritime attorneys represented more through members of the Deepwater Horizon and the El Faro than any other law firm. We not only understand maritime law but the practices and culture of maritime employers. Speak with us to discuss your case so we can go over your legal and financial options. The basics of maritime law. Maritime law is derived from many sources. Federal studies and general maritime law being two of the most prominent. These sources provide some of the maritime doctrines that are commonly used in cases involving vessels and their passengers and crew. Human rights to maintenance and cure. Maintenance and cure are benefits that an injured seaman receives from an employer during the course of recovery. So, that's all for me. Thank you for watching. Bye.